There is quite a bit of significant news to cover, so let's go through everything. This week, it turns out that Gary Black sold Tesla's stock and he bought more Rivian stock. His Tesla stock position went down from 8.8% to 7.8% and his Rivian position went up from 27 to 3.3%. I think this is his reasoning for selling Tesla stock. Tesla can keep cutting price, but if 90% of Americans still think Tesla's cost more than comparable gas-powered vehicles, have no clue about how easy Tesla's are to charge, have range anxiety, don't know about full self-driving or the continuous over-the-air updates, don't realize how safe Teslas are, don't know how cheap they are to operate or maintain or how fast or how much fun they are to drive, further price cuts do absolutely no good. I'm not asking that Tesla spends dollars on advertising that it could spend on product quality, engineers, or battery technology. I'm asking that Tesla takes 5 or 10% of the billions it will spend to cut price. Every $1,000 in price cuts is worth $2 billion in 2024, Gary says, and try advertising to educate non-EV users why they should buy an EV. Once you go EV, you never go back. Gary would probably love something like this. Imagine shoes, but with full self-driving. You wouldn't need to walk, you just put your feet in the shoes and then uh, you don't need to do anything. In the meantime, Omar says, it is now normal for my car to perform entire drives on its own with just computer vision. No interventions from me. Not surprising, not shocking, normal. Unsurprising, he says. Everyone made fun of Elon Musk, but he was right. Tesla had tremendous insight about this problem. Now, my personal experience is still quite different. I live in Canada, in Vancouver. Still quite a few interventions if I go to an unfamiliar place, but it's clearly getting better. And here's the bullish remark from Elon. My car just drove me around Austin all day with no interventions required despite ACL festival crowds. In the fairly near future, people will wonder why there was ever skepticism about full self-driving. This chart tells you everything you need to know about the Tesla Semi. On the left side here, you can see the total miles traveled and here you can see how many days the event lasted. And Tesla is in red, so you can see there was one truck, two trucks, three trucks. And here is a Nikola truck, and here's a BYD truck, and as you can see, just one Tesla Semi probably traveled a longer distance than both of these put together. This is an actual real-world test, and clearly Tesla is winning here. Some people were disappointed by this because at first it seemed really exciting, but check this out. This is the biggest battery storage facility in Australian history that has just received federal environmental approval, and this will cost $1.2 billion, which will make it one of the biggest battery storage facilities in the whole world, but Tesla's mega packs will not be used for this project. Possibly Tesla could have lost on cost, or Tesla simply does not think that it can keep up with all of the demand. Now here's something that's a bit confusing. The battery will cost $1.2 billion, so how much would it cost to pay Tesla for that same amount of power and energy. This is basically the exact same. And interestingly, this is $900 million roughly, and it does include installation. Now, this project is in Australia, so maybe they are talking in Australian dollars, which would make sense because then Tesla actually would be more expensive. However, even though Sawyer did not provide his source i found this which should be about the same project because everything matches and luckily to us the costs are broken down into australian dollars as well as into usd so usd is 1.22 billion dollars however it does say that that's the cost of a total project so we don't have the cost of the battery here exactly so details remain unclear here maybe tesla did give a competitive price but maybe Tesla simply just couldn't produce enough mega packs for them in time. James has a pretty interesting chart to share with us. Here you can see search volume and when Tesla increased prices. Tesla increased prices roughly when the search volume was high and 
overall it was on the up the trend was still generally up but here the trend reversed and it was down the search volume was down except when tesla cut prices and then the trend reversed for a brief period of time but it is now down again james says my point is rather than driving price down to move cars tesla should instead be focused on how to drive interest oh this will organically lead to more demand more orders and the backlog and better price stability and better margins and even better Tesla, he says. One thing that is quite interesting is that this one huge drop happens in October, roughly, which is when Elon took over Twitter. Now, we did have other drops like this before, so you can definitely say, yeah, that's why exactly, but it's interesting that it started dropping exactly at that time and that search data is specifically from the u.s market from cox automotive ev prices went down 22.4 percent year over year but hybrid prices are up 20.6 percent year over year and kathy wood has a comment here too she says this is an important example of the price deflation associated with technologically enabled innovation like battery pack systems the fed continues to base its decisions on lagging indicators yeah the evs are definitely helping with a fight against inflation here are some projections about the ev adoption in the long term <laughs> and interestingly the companies that benefit from oil project that uh, the ev market share is not going to be all that high if they just happen to enter the oil business recently just now i think maybe i would say okay maybe there's something there but I mean, uh, these companies have been in the oil business uh, for a long time. Look at Shell right here. They think that by 2030, the EV adoption rate is only going to be 20%. I mean, we are so close to that point already. And they think we're not going to get much further from here. They are just funny beyond belief. So really, if you throw out OPEC and if you throw out these ones, you are left with about somewhere around 40% really, I think is going to be higher than that. It's also interesting how low Goldman Sachs is, the symbol of Wall Street. Another EV company just started using Giga Presses, but if you don't have the SpaceX engineers, it's going to be a bit difficult to really fine tune the machine. And just because of the economies of scale, the biggest producer will benefit the most and Tesla has the best selling EV in the world and no one else does. I really like this personally. Tesla has added a new self-serve demo drive filter to their map. Currently 11 locations are available across the US where you can book a demo drive without Tesla staff being on site. I went for a test drive this one time uh, for a Tesla test drive actually. This was four years ago maybe now. And I felt maybe slightly pressured at the end of the test drive to put down a deposit, I didn't really quite want to, but I felt a, a bit pressured. And I'm not sure what happened there because I think they are not getting commissions for each sale. Maybe they are, I'm not sure. But after that, I was a lot less interested in going for a test drive. But here, you wouldn't have any pressure at all. So I personally, I really like that. It also, in theory, should save money for Tesla because you don't need to have staff on site. Tesla tried this kind of setup in Europe. This was more than six months ago, so I assume it actually worked out. Otherwise, why would they bring this to the US now? So I like this development personally. And if a setup a site like this over here where I live in Vancouver, then every time Tesla comes out with some new feature that's a bit more major, like for example, the Model Y suspension, that's supposed to be quite a bit better than the old one. And I've seen uh, posts on X saying the new suspension is amazing, but I tried the Model 3 and it was better, uh, but I heard that the suspension improvement for the Model Y compared to the old one is a lot more significant, but I'm not going to bother going for a test drive, dealing with someone who's going to pressure me, perhaps, maybe not, probably not, but if I do get pressured, yeah, I just don't want to do it. But now, I would actually love to go, and 
if it's really good, maybe I will actually end up buying the car. We have a camera, the front bumper camera of the Saba truck here. Chuck says, this is the best picture I have seen at the front camera recently. I can see a hardware 4 red tint. I can also see a little vent above, maybe for an air jet to clean it. And this has a wide angle lens that could be for more than just parking. I would imagine they would be using that front camera for full cell driving as well. Someone spotted the Salva truck and parked their Rivian next to it. What a cute couple. Stephen Mark Ryan said, it is clear which one of these two is the man. <laughs> That's one of the better jokes from Stephen. Toyota inks a deal to mass produce solid state EV batteries with 932 mile range and they want to commercialize these energy dense batteries by 2028. You know, just like back in 2020, we had reports that uh, they would be ready in 2021 or uh, how back in 2022, we had uh, this report that Toyota would be ready by 2025. So now it's 2028. I think in 2028, there will be more people using FSD every single day than there will be Toyota vehicles with solid state batteries. Oh look, Cybertrucks. Sentry mode is a bit different. It has an owl to scare bad people away. I think this is pretty important for Tesla stock investors to understand. Elon Musk said here, end-to-end -end FSD is the same. This was about ChatGPT. Uh, does ChatGPT understand the world? It's a conversation between the OpenAI co-founder and the CEO of NVIDIA. So let's take a look. When we train a large neural network, to accurately predict the next word mm -hmm. in lots of different texts from the internet. What we are doing is that we are learning a world model. It looks like we are learning this. It may, it may look on the surface that we are just learning statistical correlations in text. But it turns out that to just learn the statistical correlations in text, to compress them really well, what the neural network learns is some representation of the process that produced the text. This text is actually a projection of the world. There is a world out there and it has a projection on this text. And so what the neural network is learning is more and more aspects of the world, of people, of the human conditions, their, their, their hopes, dreams and motivations their interactions and the situations that we are in. And the neural network learns a compressed, abstract, usable representation of that. Mm -hmm. This is what's being learned from accurately predicting the next word. And furthermore, the more accurate you are at predicting the next word, the higher the fidelity, the more resolution you get in this process. So that's what the pre-training mm -hmm. stage does. But what this does not do is specify the desired behavior that we wish our neural network to exhibit. You see a language model, what it really tries to do is to answer the following question. If I had some random piece of text on the internet, which starts with some prefix, some prompt, what will it complete to? Mm -hmm if you just randomly ended up on some text from the internet. But this is different from, well, I want to have an assistant which will be truthful, that will be helpful, that will follow certain guide rules and not violate them. That requires additional training. This is where the fine tuning and the reinforcement learning from human teachers and other forms of AI assistance. It's not just reinforcement learning from human teachers. It's also reinforcement learning from human and AI collaboration. Our teachers are working together with an AI to teach our AI to behave. But here we are not teaching it new knowledge. This is not what's happening. We are teaching it. We are communicating with it. We are communicating to it what it is that we want it to be. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when I watch videos about AI, I feel uncomfortable. Now watching this, I also felt a bit uncomfortable, but I don't think it was anything to do with AI really. Uh, that haircut made me quite uncomfortable. I think that guy would look quite a bit better if he just cut all of his hair. But despite his hair being quite distracting, I think what he said makes sense. I really don't like situations when someone is shorting a stock and they are not telling everyone. But hedge funds now 
must reveal which companies they are shorting, basically almost immediately, although they are fighting back. The terms of the rules have been diluted a bit. Originally, the security loans were meant to be reported in 15 minutes and shared with the public in real time. So that's what, what I said. Uh, the short positions would be known basically immediately. But the SEC has now given a day's time for reporting and will take 20 days to share it with the public. It's a rigged game, so nothing is really getting all that much better. In the catch is that even if funds violate the rules, the penalty might not be worth bothering about. If the fund is small, funds may choose to delay filing or not file at all and choose to just pay the fine instead. Lucid still has not released their deliveries. Why? They always did so on the 12th or the 13th and today is already the 15th. The consensus is 2,275 which would be a lot more actually than their previous quarter. So there seems to be something going on there. I have been seeing this story everywhere so at this point I need to cover it. A 34 year old man from Vermont that managed to deceive Tesla out of five brand new cars worth over $500,000 is going to prison. After taking possession of the cars, he attempted to sell four of them. When he was unable to sell one of the Teslas, Gonzalez drove it onto the frozen surface of Lake Champlain and set it on fire back in 2019 and followed it with an insurance claim to the vehicle. To try and cash in on the insurance policy. He just didn't know when to stop. All of this actually happened a while ago. It began in 2018 and he had a pretty interesting plan here. It's crazy that it even worked in the first place, but uh, he got sentenced just now on October 11th. Mercedes just did the first test of two EVs crashing into each other. And they basically said that the results were really good because there's no engine and Therefore, there is a bigger crumble zone which protects the passengers from injuries. They said that uh, based on the data that they got from these dummies, there should be no fatal injuries even though the cars were traveling relatively fast and it's a head-on collision. James made some revisions to his initial forecast for the earnings that will be published next week. It's actually up from 60... 5 cents to now 70 cents. Wow, this looks a bit like a Tesla parking lot, but actually this is a local gym that Ray goes to. There are some cars that are not Teslas, but there are a lot of Teslas here. So there's this huge artist, Bad Bunny, who just released a song called Cyber Truck. I don't listen to his songs, but he has almost 47 million subscribers on YouTube. So almost as many as Taylor Swift. Elon Musk just made a bit of a political comment here, as tragic as the mass shootings are, armed citizens are essential to the defense of democracy. I just posted another exclusive video on Patreon, and I'm going to post another one later today as well. I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters. By joining my Patreon, you will get access to how much I think it is fair to pay per Tesla share each year between 2020 and 2033. If you sign up for the investor tier of support, you will also get my valuation model of Tesla stock with a 45 minute video walkthrough. And YouTube says you should watch this video next, but if you haven't finished watching that discussion about the future with Elon Musk, watch this one first. My name is Matt Postius. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.